Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, I've not been making quite as many videos recently. Uh, just other things to, to, to deal with in life as uh, these things happen. But uh, I decided that I really need to get back to things. So I sat down today thinking, well, I'll ease myself in. I have, I have been doing journaling, but just not filming. And I sat down and thought, yeah, I'll do one of my take five pages. Uh, because it's a while since I did one of those and I want to get that journal finished. Well, I can't find a journal. I did do some tidying up a few weeks ago and I thought it'll be in the drawer where I've got all my journals and it's not. So I've kind of spent half an hour or more searching for the journal. Don't know where it is. So I thought, right, well, the other thing I was going to do this week was to make one of my eco journals. So if you've been with my channel for a little while now, you'll know that uh, I kind of have a whole series of things on those. Uh, so I'll, I'll put some of the links either above or, or below in the description box. But last week, I just happened across uh, a Facebook group called Trashy Junk Journals. I think I'd actually just seen a video by Rosemary Morris where she spoke about what she meant by a trashy junk journal and I thought that's exactly what I've been doing with my eco journals so you know they're one and the same thing so I thought right okay I'm going to join that group because it looks fun and I'm also going to make another eco journal because I've got all the stuff to, to, to make things with. If you watch my junk use it or lose it series you know that I was I was well kind of serious about getting rid of stuff and I have been getting rid of a lot of stuff that, that I've not been using but I've also kept quite a bit too and just on that I'm going to be coming back with some more junk use it or lose it projects in the not too distant future maybe two to three weeks maybe a month's time I hope to be back with more of them but anyway for today I'm going to make an eco journal aka a trashy junk journal so all I've done is I've gone to my big box of things and pulled a few things out. So this was a packaging of some Christmas cards. So I'm quite pleased because I guess I've used this within six months of it having got it. I've got some food boxes. I think this came off some yeah yogurts and I particularly like this because it's the way I've opened it up or the way it opens up it's actually got these little flaps. So I thought that would make a great page. Uh, yeah, more boxes, uh, I think this just came in through the door, almost a little journal in itself, uh, more boxes, that would make another one with a good kind of flap, uh, I don't know, might save that one as a kind of tag thing, boxes, usual cereal boxes, this particularly good one I think and I, I I might use this today or I might actually keep this I thought this would make a really good journal cover it's almost that kind of traveler notebook size maybe just I cut it off there so I might use that today I do have another one of these uh, that just now this was a piece of a cereal box that I'd previously decorated. I don't know if I was making some ATCs or something. I had that bit left over and I thought, well, you know, I may as well just use that now. Uh, med boxes. This was an internal piece of packaging, I think, and I thought that would make a great page. Some cardboard. I do like that in mixed media projects, but you know, there's quite a bit here, so I thought a page from that might be quite interesting. Some wrappers, thought that might make a good uh, pocket. Other bits of cardboard, and in this box, with this to the side, is where I've kept. Well, more food boxes. Envelopes, plenty of them. More food boxes, bits of cardboard. They were obviously just of a size that they fitted neatly in that box, so that must have been one of my tidying up sessions. So yeah, various bits and pieces here. Uh, some junk mail stuff as well. So yeah, I'm going to set to and make a, an eco journal, trashy junk journal, and what I might do is do this video in two or three parts. So I think the first one will be putting the basic 
journal together. What I might do then is a separate video on creating pockets and tags and then maybe the final one is decorating it or starting to use it. I'll, I'll just see how long these things go. So probably the rest of this video I'll put on fast forward and I'll certainly probably edit bits out because much of the, the next stage will just be about cutting things up and then assembling it into a journal. I think because a lot of what I'm going to use is kind of card, cardboard or you know the kind of cereal box type thing. I'm not going to do this stitched in, I think I'll probably just do it as a, a no-sew journal. So yeah, hope you enjoy it and see you on the other side. I thought I'd just explain where I am at this stage. So I've got most of my cardboard pieces together. I mean, obviously this is the type of thing you can make as large or as small as you want. And the way that I'm making the binding, I could go back and put more things in at a future point. So I've got my card, a piece of card all together. Now I've looked out some of the junk mail and some envelopes. And all I'm going to do is kind of integrate these into here, uh, decide the kind of running order, and then I'll start to, to punch them. Some of these are, yeah, they'll probably just fit straight in. Others are kind of little booklets. So what I might do is take the staples out and then actually just insert them as single pages. Or, yeah, I may do single pages, but then do some foldovers. Yeah, I'll see as I go along. And with the envelopes, I'll do a variety of things here. I think like a lot of people, I like the design on the inside of the envelopes. So I might just open a few up, just quickly take off the edges and they're there as pages then to, to write on or arch on the one or whatever. So yeah, that's the next stage.
So I've now integrated the envelopes, uh, really just sticking them in wherever, just spacing them out in the various pages. And all I'm going to do now is I've got a two-hole punch, uh, and all I'm going to do is start punching just roughly in the middle. I'm not going to measure this out accurately because, yeah, so long as I get them roughly in the middle, other than the smaller pieces where maybe only one hole will catch. I just want to make certain that they're going to fit within the, the kind of boundary of the covers, although if they stick out a little bit it doesn't matter, but just going to eyeball it to get the centre. And that should just do nicely. So all I'm going to do now is punch everything. If there's anything that's too thick then I'll just get out my uh, crocodile punch just a single hole punch and just punch that way, so here we go. Okay, so I've got everything punched now. The only thing I had to use the uh, crocodile on was the card. That was just a bit thick for the, sorry, the corrugated card. That was just a bit thick for the two-hole punch. And the only other thing I did, really the only measuring I did, was to make sure that my front cover and my back cover were kind of punched in the same area, just so that they're not kind of offset. So, in terms of binding, there's two ways I could do it. One is simply to thread something through there and tie it and thread something through this set of holes and tie it. The other way is just to go in from uh, the front right round here and tie it this way and you know that's kind of personal preference. Because I'm going to be taking these pages out to work on again at this stage I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to go through, round, up and I'll just tie it there just now. So I'll do that now. So I've gone all the way through that side and all I'm going to do now, I'll pull that a bit and I'm now going to go through from the back to the front. Now this is just garden twine, I use this quite a lot, I like it, I've got a big roll of it. Uh, you can see it's sat around for a while that it's quite faded in places. Now if you're using something like this, one of the problems is sometimes the ends uh, start to free and it gets harder to go through. So I just twist it kind of like that. It's it's kind of strong enough that, that it will hold that for, you know, two or three pages. But the other thing is you can just put a dab of glue on it. I've done that before, especially using embroidery thread or something like that. So just a dab of glue, give it a few seconds and it dries and then it will go through much easier. But I'm now just going to do the back. The last piece just going through the front cover and I'll just pull them in. It's quite neat, not that it needs to be neat, and I will simply tie it so. Now I'm leaving this loose just now because I'm going to work on this as I say, but you can see there, you know, my very quick eco journal, aka trashy junk journal. So I've used cereal boxes, I've used corrugated cardboard packaging, I've used junk mail, I've used food boxes, I've used envelopes, other leaflet things, uh, yeah, a lot of junk mail, more food cartons, and so on. Medicine boxes, inserts from other packaging. All of this is stuff that would end up in the recycling bin. So, 
you know, other than maybe this, which is stuff that I've got a ton of sitting around for the garden anyway. So I think that's probably long enough for this video. What I'll do in part two is show you how I will make some pockets and maybe add on some other bits and pieces, maybe some tags. So I hope you found this interesting in terms of making the basic junk journal. Uh, trashy junk journal, eco journal. Obviously you just use whatever you have. Now how did that one end up sticking up? Oh I see, that folds down. You know obviously it's okay to have things sticking out. I, today I'm, I'm in a mood for keeping it all within the confines of that but it doesn't matter if some things spill over. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll join me for part two. Bye for now.